Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another arcade game repair video for you today. Now, if you haven't seen our other uh, videos in this series, we are working on a Bally Spy Hunter. And in the first video, we worked on the uh, suitcase. What did we do in the first video? First video, we did some things. Second video, we worked on the suitcase and the power supply. And then in this video, we're going to work through the other little game boards in it. So we've got to pull out... This is the actual main board uh, that actually displays the game and makes most of the sound. So we're going to pull that out first. This is a Bally MCR game, so it's got a little bracket here that you take loose. And then there's actually three boards in this big sandwich <laughs> that we're going to pull out. So we're going to unbolt that, disconnect the uh, connectors, and go put it on the workbench so we can mess with it a little bit. So this is the main board that we took out. Um, like we said, it's a stack of three boards. This is actually the, it's upside down for you, but really it's upside down for the way it's orientated in the cabinet too, but it says Super Sound I.O. So I.O. means in out. So all of the uh, controls and everything connect to these little pins on the side. And it also is the sound board basically. Um, What we're going to do is we're going to remove all the chips that are in sockets and clean the legs on the on the chips and then put them back in the sockets. We're going to clean these pins up a little bit so they make good contact. And then we're going to take this board off and look at the bottom, the back of it, to see what the solder looks like on these pins. Sometimes if you remove a connector over and over again, on the end you'll get bad solder joints on the end of the uh, connectors. So we're going to check to see if that is so. Um, some, you might say, well, why are you even messing with it if it already works? Because we're trying to, we, you know, we sell them. So we're trying to make it reliable so that uh, we give it our best shot at it lasting quite a while. So the, the other thing about these MCR boards is <clears throat> they have these ribbon cables that connect them together. And those are known for going bad. Now, with that said... These ribbon cables don't look like the original ribbon cables to me. I think somebody may have replaced them at some point. Originally, uh, the ones I've seen, now these may be original, I don't know, but the ones that give you a problem, they're a, they're a flat piece of like, uh, it's almost like, it looks like cellophane tape or something, and it's got the traces kind of uh, implanted in the in the tape. And they what happens is they delaminate and they just they deteriorate. But these are the these are the the good kind. So as a matter of fact, I had ordered because I knew I had this game and I was going to be working on it. I had ordered a new set of them. But if you look, my new set is exactly like the ones that are on it. So uh, since the game's working, and since these are the more modern style ones, you know they've been around since the early '80s. But since they're not the crappy ones that you see on these a lot of times, I'm not really going to replace them unless I figure out something's wrong with the game or something but uh so i'm just going to save these new ones for my next mcr game so we re will reuse these connectors because they're in a uh, pretty good shape and uh we're just going to clean 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 so uh what i'll do is i'll take this board off and you can see somebody look i was saying that i thought somebody had replaced them notice there's a screw missing over here and there's a screw missing over here so somebody's had this out and messing with it at some point. Um, but uh, we'll clean that all up. Now on the other side, boom, boom, boom. you have this board. I didn't realize that board was backwards. But I guess it has to be because of the way the, uh, the, way the ribbon cables connect to it. So I guess it has to be backwards. But... One of these is the RAM board and one—I mean the video board—and one of them is the CPU board. So the CPU board kind of runs the game code and makes everything happen, and then the video board actually creates the image to make it where you can see everything happening. And then the sound board, of course, makes the sounds. And since it's also the I/O board, the in-out board, it interfaces with the CPU board and. Uh, can detect what button you're pressing or how you're steering the steering wheel or um, all of that all of that jazz so I'll take this off and do the same thing clean whatever there is 
and uh, show you what the other side of it looks like. We've got some trace damage a little bit. You see here, that's some kind of where it's been scraped, but it looks like it's all right. It's been scraped there. Looks like it was scraped at some point across there, and then somebody actually repaired it. Let me turn it around to make sure you can see it. So see these, it looks like there was a scrape across there, and somebody went in and repaired the traces with just a little bit of solder flowing across it to make sure they're still connected. Um, so I'll check that to uh, make sure they're still fine, but ironically, if you look, most of these traces just run up here to this edge connector that you don't use. This was this was just like an expansion thing in case they ever did need to use it, or it may have been for like a testing aid or something at the factory or whatever, but um, this connector doesn't even need to be on there. You could cut all of those traces, get rid of it, unless they connect somehow on the other side, but I don't believe they do. So those were repairs that probably didn't even need to be made. Um, and that's probably not a factory thing. They probably wouldn't have put out a board with that much damage on it. Somebody's worked on that. You can see another one over here where at some point somebody has reworked some of that. So we'll take this board off too and uh, clean the socketed chips and all of that jazz. So I'll come back whenever, uh, whenever we've got it apart. All right, so we worked through it. We cleaned all the little chips. These are ROM chips. These are RAM chips, and that is a 75133 chip. Don't know why it's in a socket. This RAM chip here, the socket's been changed. You can see how the solder's discolored. You can see that it's some work on some stuff up here too. So someone has definitely serviced this, and you can also see on the connectors how they've resoldered that at some point. but it all appears good to go right so that's our video ram board now remember it already worked anyway so we're going back to our big huge board our sandwich and we're going to take the uh, screws out of it this is like looking into king tut's tomb who knows if anybody's ever been in this far. I don't know. I would imagine they probably have though. As you can see the way this thing was designed, it's kind of like three big huge boards. So they, they basically just made a really big board and then split it into three and folded it on, on itself. And then remember from the pictures of the inside, this isn't even everything. This is just the, the, the actual gameplay all of the little accessory stuff like the audio amp the uh, the little board that can tell where you're you know the the position board for the steering the the other sound board that makes the peter gunn theme song the power supply the power brick um there's another little lamp driver board that makes the lamps work on the on the display there's all that stuff too so that would be you know another couple of these boards so basically they designed a really a really long circuit and then broke it up into boards and flipped them in half. So let's see if it does look like they've done anything to this. I don't see anything jumping out at me. Maybe. Oh, look, there's a piece of paper there. We might have to. We might have to look under it to see what's on the paper. Hopefully, it's nothing nasty. <laughs> oh, it's just something that they put in from the factory, I guess, so that if the board flexed, these. Uh, traces on the bottom wouldn't short out against that. So, so we're going to do the same thing with this one. We're going to take all the ROM chips off, and clean them. Um, some of these are RAM, I guess. Clean everything up. Cl clean the connectors. Oh, by the way, this is where the power connects in. I've had one of these before where one of these little, uh, I can't remember what they call those, but it's just a, like a little jumper. One of those was all burnt up. I don't know, something went wrong somewhere and burnt one of those up, so sometimes you run into that. But these all look nice and clean. Um, so we're going to clean up where the cables connect. 
we're going to clean all of the chips. Of course, that's the CPU chip. And then put it all back together, bolt everything back together, and put it back in the game. Because, hey, it was already working, right? So it shouldn't need too much work. So we remounted it back in, and once again, I checked the voltage uh, for like the fifth time. And we now have 5.05 .05 volts on that front board, which is like, it's perfect, it's perfect. Yeah, that's exactly how you want it. You want it a little tiny bit high. And we are still up and running. So we haven't destroyed anything yet. So every time we work on one of these little boards in the game, we're making it a little bit more reliable. Basically, we want to be able to say that we went through and we touched everything. You know, we checked out everything. So we probably could have skipped that whole part with the CPU board, but some of, a lot of the chips were had a lot of uh, oxidization on the uh, legs and just didn't look good so we cleaned them up now the reason that you have to do something like that is because we're going to do this sounds good board next probably you can see all of the little legs on the chip every one of those is a connection and you see how filthy they are or they look filthy from here we'll see here in a minute but um, basically if any of those connections isn't good enough that electricity can travel through it you're, you're going to get problems stuff that doesn't work stuff that works intermittently so uh, when it was new that perfect that connection on all of those legs on every chip was clean you know and uh, we're trying to get it that way again so that it is reliable so I keep calling it the sounds good bo uh, board but like we saw last time it's the cheap squeak deluxe board <laughs> so this board makes the game work this one is the sound board that makes all the the sounds and the sound effects but this one this one board all it does is make the peter gunn theme song which is the coolest part of the whole game so we're going to take this out next and basically it'll, it'll be the same thing we're just going to clean the chips and then uh, we'll put it back in and we'll we'll test it after this one to see if uh, see if we have that sound let's see how filthy the chips ended up being uh, actually they don't look that bad here this one kind of does so I'll take this one out just so you can kind of see what we're doing if you've never messed with these before so this is a 6821 chip so this is called a PIA chip for more than one reason let me tell you so PIA stands for peripheral interface adapter I believe but anyway, if you look at it, this chip has probably never been out of this socket since 1983. I don't know if that's going to focus or not, but if you look at the chip, you can see there's just dirt on it. It's just oxidization. Is that how you is that how you pronunciate that? <laughs> so basically, it's 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 not tarnished. It's like uh, it just looks dull, and it, all of that's resistance. So the way it works, you know, the board sends signals it's talking digitally to everything so so on this one pin it may be sending a pulse whatever the the clock frequency is i think is how it works but it might be, it may be sending a a pulse at i don't know i wouldn't even want to guess how many times a second it sends a pulse but let's let's just just for sake of argument let's say 10 times a second i think it's much 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 faster than that but we'll say 10 times a second so it's sending little pieces of data 10 times a second to this little pin and if that pin is dirty and it's sending it through the socket when it gets to the pin maybe nine of them go through but one of them there was enough resistance to where it missed that one and so because of that it'll something will you know if it's telling it to draw the car right here on the screen and then it misses one of them, it might draw a tree right there on the screen or something like that, you know. So if any of these pins on anything, on any game <laughs> or any part of the game are messed up, you'll, you'll get problems. So the reason that you do the ones on the sockets is because the ones that are soldered to the board, you don't really have the same problem because the, the metal is actually coated with solder holding it to the trace that it wants to connect to. So that's a pretty good connection. Sometimes you get problems with those two, but not usually. But where the sockets are, you know, there's a little bit of like a spring action that the 
pin is holding the leg. And so if there's over time things move, you know, and if, if there's any corrosion or oxidization or dirt on the pin and it moves a little bit to now where the, the spring part of the socket is touching a part of the leg that's pretty dirty, it just it's not gonna make good contact. So it's real common on any kind of PCB board if you have a problem for it to be dirty pins in the sockets. Sometimes too the socket is bad, like it's just a, not a good design socket. There were good ones and bad ones. Um, the best ones are like dual wipe, they call it. It grabs the pin from both sides. So um, we're just gonna go through, clean them all. Uh, let's look on the back real quick. The back looks completely original. Nobody's ever messed with it that I can see. So this may have never even been out of the game. This is a 68,000 CPU. Big old sucker. So th this CPU is newer than the other ones. So this is, uh, the copyright date's 1983. But then over here it says 84, so maybe it was like a different, a different uh, a revision or something. But if you look real close, cheap Squeak Deluxe. I'm not making these names up. That's what they called their stuff. They had one called a Vidiot board in the Bally Baby Pac-Man. They had a board called the Sounds Good board. They had a bunch of crazy names for them. And sometimes on some of the Atari stuff, well, a lot of different country companies, but they would etch little crazy sayings in the... Um, so like this part of the board, there's nothing there. And since they're printing this anyway, they could have printed something there, then it wouldn't have cost anything extra. Or they could have actually even made a trace there. So where it says Cheap Squeak Deluxe, that's actually like a trace, I think. It looks like it. Yeah, it's like a trace that they left on the board in, in the design just so that it would say something. So they could have put anything. They could have set, put a little saying there. And on some of the boards, they actually do. One of them says, I love beer or something like that. <laughs> just stupid stuff. I don't, there's nothing on this one, but... Um, that's a pretty interesting little thing if you ever find one. So we'll clean these. Um, this, like I said, is the board that makes the Peter Gunn theme song. But it's not amplified, I don't think. So none of these caps really have anything to do with... I may be wrong about that. I don't know. But none of these caps really have anything to do with the sound being amplified or anything. So I think we don't even need to replace those. On the actual audio amp board, we're gonna recap it to make the sound as clean as possible. But um, we'll pop it back in and then we're gonna test it and see if it actually makes the sound like it should. So we put everything back together and we ran into our first problem. So if I press on the, uh, the way you test the Cheap Squeak Deluxes, there's a little button here. And when you test it, it starts the, the theme song. <laughs> We're only getting sound out of this right speaker. But it's working. Everything's good, right? So now, if I go in the test menu and I play all of the sounds... the sounds are there but some of them are really low you can barely hear them and uh, I don't hear anything out of this left speaker so I swap the wires the speakers fine either speaker can make noise so it looks like the boards are probably fine eh. and they send it over to this little audio amp board and this little amp board amplifies the sounds 
and sends it to both speakers. So I'm thinking that one channel of this is messed up. Either this side or this side's not working. So if I trace the wires back, I should be able to figure it out. So the speaker that's working has a white and black wire and a green and orange wire. And on the little connector, the white and black wire and the green and orange wire connect to this side. So this side seems to be fine. The uh, heat sink's actually hot. And this side, the heat sink isn't hot at all. So I'm thinking it's probably getting its connection, but we've got some problems with these caps or something. So we're gonna pull this board out next. I'm gonna leave the game on. It's safe to unplug um, amp boards like this. Um, I'm gonna pull this out. We'll go look at it on the bench and see if we can see anything wrong with it. So there is our amp board. And you can remember this one was getting warm and the wires for the speaker that was working were on these two pins. So you might think, oh, it's getting hot, must be messed up. No, there's, that's why they have a heat sink, they get hot. So this side works, this side doesn't. So what we're, since they're pretty much the exact same, we're just gonna check resistance between different parts, you know. So uh, this side works. We got our multimeter set on ohms. You can look through the schematics. This thing's so simple though, we can probably find it just messing with it. So that's a one ohm resistor. That's a one ohm resistor. And on this side, the side that works, one ohm resistor and a one ohm resistor. Now caps, usually you can't chest with continuity, but if this thing's not working, it's probably because something shorted together. So you can you can test just to see if anything's how it shouldn't be. So that's like 2,000, something like that, 2,500. See how it's going up? That's because my meter is charging up the cap a little bit. But it's, it's proving to us that the caps aren't shorted. Right, and we should get something similar over on this side. Yep. Yep. Yeah, and so that makes sense because it looks like this is after it comes out of the amp. And remember, this amp's working and this amp wasn't getting hot. So the, the signals come in here and then go into the two amps. So it's probably, this side's working, so it's probably one of these caps or something. So let's see if any of the caps are shorted. That one is not. That one is not. That one is not. That one is not. And that one is not. Okay, so none of the caps are shorted. So now I'm gonna check the, the resistors. So we've got this resistor here, which is the good side. 27 ohms, the resistor here, 27 ohms, that seems legit. This one, 2700, this one, it's similar. This one, we're just looking for things that are major wrong, 2700, 2700. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna try, it could be this, the actual chips band, but the first thing we're gonna try is we're gonna replace all these caps. So what we're hoping is that one of the caps is not doing its thing and that the signal can't pass through it and get to the chip. So uh, I'm gonna replace one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. I'm gonna replace the 11 caps on the board. And uh, we're, we were gonna do that anyway because we wanted it to uh, sound as clean as possible. you know. So we're gonna replace the 11 caps, then we'll put it back in and see if that changed anything for us. Um, it still could be something like a broken wire too, you know, but everything looked cool. So, I don't know, but uh, we'll, uh, we'll replace those 11 caps and see what we come up with. So I was getting ready to replace the caps 
and I noticed something on the back. So this is the one that's good. This is the one that's not working. If you look on the back, somebody's been messing with it and that pin, I don't know if you can see it or not, that pin and that pin are touching. There's solder connecting them together. And on this side, the exact same circuit, the exact same part, they're not. So that shouldn't be like that. So I'll turn on my um, um, turn on my iron here, and we'll remove that real quick. And then just for giggles, we'll put it back in the machine and see if that's all that it was. Um, and if that fixes it, we'll pull it back out and do the caps like we were going to do anyway. But I want to see if our deductive... I don't know. I guess that's not deductive logic. <laughs> I want to see if our skills are right. So let's see if I can get that out of there. Yeah, see that? So now they're not touching. Right? So I believe this big trace here is probably the ground. That's why it's so big. So basically, that line was grounded, which is one side of this big cap. So I don't know. We'll see. Didn't look right to me. So we'll go try it real quick. That did not fix it. So we replaced all the caps. That did not fix it. We looked at the wiring, everything looked straight. So uh, I, I went over the schematics very carefully and the way the thing works is um, the super, the, the uh, cheap squeak deluxe board sends sound to the left and the right channel, but it's in mono. So on the board, it like the two sounds are connected together and then it sends out to this channel and this channel. This channel is completely isolated from that channel and goes to the one speaker and then this channel goes to the other speaker. This side's working fine. This side, never you never hear a peep out of that speaker. Like we said, we swapped the wires. The speaker's fine. Um, and then the, the actual game board sends three channels to the left and three channels to the right. So the three channels to the right are all working, but the three channels to the left, none of them are working. So I'm 99.999% positive that this chip is bad. That's all for now. Join us next week, folks, as we try to determine, does this baby hunt? Leave your comments below. Make sure to give us a thumbs up. And we hope you've enjoyed the video.